Hi Bo Bakers! When I go through all of your requests, one thing is very apparent. You guys love Nutella. So in true Bigger Boulder Baking fashion, I'm going to show you how to make your own perfect homemade Nutella and crepes. Because what goes better with Nutella than crepes? So let's get baking! So I know some of my recipes are more intricate than others, but my mom used to whip up crepes for five kids like that, so I know that all of you will be able to do this. In a large bowl, we're going to add in our flour, salt, egg and milk and then gently mix these ingredients together. And then lastly, add in the melted butter and mix in until just combined. When your batter has no more lumps, you can stop whisking and that's how easy it is to make a crepe batter. I know it looks a little bit thin, but when we refrigerate this for at least 30 minutes, it's gonna thicken up a little bit and it's gonna be perfect. So while this is in the fridge, we're gonna go ahead and get started on our homemade Nutella. To make our Nutella, we're gonna start out by roasting the main ingredient, which is hazelnuts. We roast them for two reasons, to get the shells off and to get them a lovely roasted color because it gives great flavor to your Nutella. The better you roast your hazelnuts, the better flavor your Nutella will have. So make sure you get them nice and toasted. The shells of your hazelnuts will come off really easy once they're roasted. So we're gonna put them in a tea towel, rub them all together, and you'll start to see the shells come off. The shells aren't gonna come off 100%, but that's okay, we just want most of it off. Okay, lovely, our hazelnuts look fantastic. They're nice and toasted. There's a little bit of skin still on them, but they are gonna be perfect for the base of our Nutella. Our next step is to process our hazelnuts in a food processor until you get a nice smooth paste, almost like peanut butter. You can also do this in a blender. I haven't personally tried it, but I've seen other people do it and it worked. At this stage, you wanna scrape down the sides of the bowl again. You want to get all the lumps of nuts back down in there. Now, I know this might look like it's ready because it's like a paste, but we need to actually see the oil come out of the hazelnut. So we're gonna go again for another few seconds. And there we have it. Oh my gosh, this looks gorgeous. As you can see, this is so much different than a few seconds ago when I showed you. You see the shininess on top? That's the natural oils of the hazelnut coming out. And this is what we want, like a fatty kind of a nut butter. Now the reason that we processed it so long as well is that we need it nice and smooth because the smoother you get it now, then the smoother your end result will be. You don't want any lumps of nuts in there, you want it totally smooth. Okay, lovely. Now in with the rest of our ingredients. To this we're going to add in our icing sugar, our cocoa powder, our cooled melted chocolate. Look at that gorgeous chocolate. Some vanilla extract and a little bit of flavorless oil, like a vegetable oil. And then on with the lid and we're going to process again until it's lovely and smooth. For this part, also go in and scrape down the sides of the bowl to get a lovely smooth Nutella. As you can see, it's still a little bit grainy, so we're gonna keep on processing. Okay, and we're done. Look at that. I pureed it for like another little over a minute, and this is the end result. Beautiful and smooth and nice and shiny. I don't know how many homemade Nutella recipes you guys have tried, but I have tried a few, and hands down, this is the best one I've ever made. It tastes just like the real thing, but it's even better because it's homemade. By accident, I actually put mine in the fridge, but then later on, it tasted like the inside of a Ferrero Rocher, so it's a win-win situation no matter what you do. To store your homemade Nutella, put it into an airtight jar, and you can leave it at room temperature so it's always nice and spreadable. It should last around two weeks at room temperature, but in my house it lasted a day. Breakfast cooking is kind of dear to my heart. As some of you may not know, I used to have a catering business in San Francisco and I would just do over-the-top elaborate breakfasts like my red velvet pancakes, my churro waffles, all sorts of crazy concoctions. If you guys would like to see more breakfast recipes, then leave me a comment below. Our crepe batter is chilled, so now it's time to fry them off. You want to use a good quality pan, try to make sure it's non-stick or at least well buttered. Get it nice at medium temperature. You want a controlled medium temperature, not too hot or your crepes will burn. Now just ladle on your batter and then quickly swirl it around your pan to get a thin, even crepe. It's Murphy's Law that your first crepe never works out. It burns, it looks ugly, it just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. So get over that one and the rest of them will be perfect. You want to cook it on the one side until you see these lovely bubbles form and you see a nice colour on the other side. Look at that, gorgeous. Okay, lovely, now it's time to flip. Gorgeous. Okay, my first one didn't turn out too bad, but it's happened to me before. Look at that beautiful colour, this is what you want. Now that it's got nice colour on the other side, it's done, lovely. We're gonna put it onto our plate and then move on to our next crepe. Okay, so we're gonna cook off another crepe. For each crepe, I measure around a third of a cup, which is like two small ladles. And just like before, quickly swirl it around your pan. Looks great, we have all of our little bubbles. We're gonna let it cook a little bit more. If you've ever been to Paris, you'll see them on the streets preparing crepes and Nutella. It's just like the best European street food. As you can see, they cook really fast. All you want to do is get a little bit of color and then flip them over. I'm gonna do something really bold and try and flip it in the air. 
One, two, three. Oh, yay! Ta-da! This crepe batter actually doesn't contain sugar, so it can be used for savory crepes as well as sweet. To make your Nutella crepes, while it's still on the pan, spread on your beautiful homemade Nutella. The heat of the crepe will warm it up and it'll be easy to spread. And make sure you go all the way to the edges. Now for extra flavor and texture, I love Nutella crepes with slices of bananas. It's just such a great compliment. At this point, have your frying pan on very low because you're just trying to heat up these ingredients. And then simply fold it over. Oh my gosh, I can smell the chocolate. And then fold it over one more time. I like to serve at least two because one is never enough. And you can always top them off with a drizzle of Nutella. Be sure to save my homemade Nutella recipe because you're going to see it come up in future videos. Crepes and Nutella is just one of the nicest things you could ever eat. It's kind of like comfort food. Mm. I really hope you enjoyed this week's video and thank you so much for subscribing to my channel. I'll see you back here again next Thursday for more Bigger Boulder Baking.